let's get stuck in. Um, we've got a packed program. Um, we're joined for the first session, uh, which is focusing on the current outlook for strategic commissioning, um, by Catherine Rains, who's Assistant Chief Executive at Staffordshire County Council. Nick Bell sends his apologies. He's done something awful to his knee, apparently. Um, so I imagine he's back in Staffordshire with his leg up. Um, joined by Andy Bagnall, the Head of Public Services Reform for the CBI, and by Darren Cox, who is Head of Procurement and Supply Chain Consulting at Atkins. So let's kick off with Catherine. Thank you. I'll turn, just turn my microphone on. I'm, I'm told it takes a few seconds to kick in, but I think I've got a loud enough voice and you'll be able to, be able to hear me. So yes, Nick Bell sends his apologies. Um, and as Simon said, I'm, I'm Deputy Chief Exec um, at, at Staffordshire. I'm going to tell everybody that Nick has actually damaged his leg playing cricket at the weekend. So those of you who know him, please um, give him a really hard time about that because he told me that uh, he would like me to stand in for him late last night when I was actually at the Houses of Parliament um, at another event. <coughs> so you'll see these very well prepared gentlemen to my left and right. I've got a few notes on St. Ermin's Hotel <laughs> <laughs> note paper. Um, so if I put my glasses on, I won't be able to tell whether you're enjoying what I say or not, which might be, um, might be a positive advantage for me. Um, we are at Staffordshire, uh, very, no, that's no good, I should have to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are at Staffordshire um, making, I think, uh, great strides in commissioning, but um, as Simon said, it is a very fast-moving field for us all, and we're all kind of working it out as, as we go along. One of the things we're absolutely clear about is that it isn't uh, procurement, um, and that it absolutely needs to focus on outcomes just as much as it needs to focus on cost reduction. Um, and the need to ensure that there is a diverse market in place to, to cover this, I think, is very pressing. Uh, one of the things that we find is that when we talk to different potential partners, some of them are more mature in their understanding of that than others. There's been so much emphasis on cost reduction, and indeed it is absolutely key to us and we all know which way um, spend is going um, but the need to drive up outcomes particularly in a political environment is very very um, important and to do that we also need to develop internally we need to develop our own procurement functions um, and I think there is a skills gap uh, certainly there has been in Staffordshire I believe that that's that's felt at, at other councils um, around the country and in actual fact, we have uh, appointed a procurement partner uh, to help us uh, with our commissioning processes so that, we, uh, so that we can get it right. I think one of the things that's uh, critical for us in our commissioning is insight. Uh, we have developed a commissioning model that we now use in Staffordshire, and it begins with insight. Uh, we have a... a I think something called Engaging Communities Staffordshire, uh, which is where we uh, <coughs> try to look at, across agencies, take a multi-agency perspective of uh, the needs of our customers and, and our residents. I think just one, one word of caution about insight, and I, you know, I, I should explain that I'm previously from the private sector, so I've been doing this job for a year and a half. Um, and prior to that, I had 25 years um, in pharmaceuticals here and, and, and around the world. And I think insight um, has to be treated with, with care. Um, I'm, going to, I'm not going to be able to remember the precise details of this example, but I think it was in the Second World War when um, our uh, Air Force were uh, going, becoming airborne in planes that were clearly uh, not as advanced as, as others. And the Americans had superior aircraft to us. And our Air Force were asked uh, by, by our Ministry of Defence, what kind of uh, aircraft would you like? And they uh, came out with all of the enhancements that they would like to see uh, with the aircraft. And we set about developing it. And 15 years later, we delivered the plane that the Americans had had 15 years earlier. Because, of course, the operational people on the ground had used their insight of what was currently available to say what they wanted and hadn't necessarily been the strategic thinkers about what was really needed for the future. So when I think about our library services, for example, and I can talk a bit more about this later if anyone's interested, I think that actually asking residents is only one part of the equation and really having strategic visionary leaders 
to take people to new places and help them develop their own insight is, is, a, is an equally important um, part of that. So I think commissioning partners need to be ready to, to help with that piece as well. Um, in terms of how to deliver this, I mean, there are a number of different delivery models that we uh, touch on. So we have, of course, the NHS Partnership Trust. We've also got something called the MASH, which is a multi-agency safeguarding hub, which is where uh, we commission outcomes for families based on a family-centred <coughs> model, where all the different agencies come together, first in the country, for them to come together on a uh, family-centric basis. Uh, to deliver their services in a coordinated way. We've also got partnership models with um, the private sector um, around our assets, for example. However, the need to develop more commercial investment models and to develop payment by results, I think, is, uh, is really growing. And we have got uh, an example of that that, we've, uh, that we're just closing out now, and also uh, a challenge that I want to sort of throw out to the audience, if you like, as, as a second example. So the first is our education shared services, uh, which is where we are. Actually, I need to be careful what I say because we're just coming to the close of a procurement uh, process for this, but where we were looking either for a partner um, or for a private equity investor. Uh, to come in, bring some commercial acumen, help us develop the model, um, and really help us drive up outcomes in educational uh, provision. So what we were looking to do there was, yes, very much reduce our costs, but absolutely improve our outcomes. And in the last couple of minutes, uh, I'll just talk about something that we have coming up. You, you'll all be aware of the city deals um, that have taken <coughs> place, and you will all hopefully be aware that Staffordshire is right at the front um, in terms of uh, banging on the door to say that those deals need to be broadened out beyond just cities. Um, we've been doing a, a lot of work uh, with central government uh, to try and uh, establish a, a deal of our own. And I think there's space in that area for uh, the private sector to get involved. If we look at the, uh, the development of economic prosperity, there are lots of ways in which we can do that. We can bring forward assets um, in terms of uh, employment sites. We can look at housing. We can look at investment into our roads. We can look at the provision of cheap and sustainable energy. Um, and we want to be able to do that in a way that pays us back on our investment. And we're looking at innovative models. There is the Manchester model of earn back, obviously via government. There are also the models around business rates, TIF local, that sort of thing. And the idea of having a private sector partner who could sort of wrap around all of that, a bit like the Carlisle MOD um, deal, um, but hopefully on a slightly more equitable basis, um, then we, that we think there's tremendous potential there. Um, and we think government would be really interested um, in that, in a partnership between uh, local government and a private sector partner to deliver uh, local economic growth. So that's one that I'll just throw down um, that we're thinking about right now. And that would be measured in terms of things like increasing business rates, decreasing needs, um, you know, um, improvement in GVA, etc. So we, we, we'd like to be right at the forefront of that. So I have to dash off immediately after this. So I hope these gentlemen will forgive me in saying that if anybody does want to contact me, it's catherine.rains at staffordshire.gov.uk. With Catherine Rains spelt like that. I didn't time what I had to say. I hope that was, was only five minutes, and I'll yes. pass over to the next person. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. That's an actual market management happening right there in front of us. <laughs> um, Andy. Thanks. Thanks very much, Simon. Um, my name is Andy Bagnall. I'm Head of Public Services Reform uh, at the CBI. Um, people could be perhaps forgiven for thinking that the CBI uh, is interested uh, in this agenda, this sort of big question, from purely the perspective uh, of providers. Um, the CBI, of course, does uh, represent, has in its membership, a number of uh, sort of providers of, of public services, but takes a public policy approach to this question rather than a trade association uh, uh, approach. And what I mean by that is we also represent businesses as uh, funders uh, of public services through their business tax, but also users of public services. Business has an interest in having a healthy workforce, having a, a well-educated workforce. So the CBI's perspective in this debate uh, tends to be a sort of more holistic one uh, than people first imagine. 
We're in the middle of doing a project uh, with the new local government network on how we can improve uh, commissioning uh, in the local government space, and that mirrors some of the work uh, that we also do looking at uh, commissioning and public service reform uh, in the central government space. I think the um, place to start uh, is probably with the sort of the economic context. Obviously, um, the economy, the backdrop uh, of the economy is not as good as uh, many felt it would be by this point, uh, sort of when the, when the coalition government took over in 2010. Um, the CBI estimates 0.6% uh, quarter-on-quarter uh, growth for the first quarter, uh, sorry, for the third quarter of this year, and another 0.2% uh, in the fourth quarter. <laughs> with only 1.2% uh, growth overall in 2013. So that economic backdrop sets the context uh, for the public service challenge that we're facing, as we say, in uh, local and uh, central government. And I'm sure I'm, uh, uh, well, I'm sure there's no need for me to emphasise to a local government audience uh, the scale of the challenge represented um, by that lower than expected growth, uh, the deficit reduction targets, 28%. Uh, reduction in central government grant to local government, what that means for trying to maintain service outcomes. And as I say, business has, uh, has a vested interest in, in maintaining service outcomes uh, as much as any other uh, component part of society. So the challenge, as uh, CBI sees it uh, from, the, sort of from the provider perspective, from the business perspective, is that uh, business as usual is not an option in these circumstances. We have a... Um, machine for providing public services, which obviously if we're going to reduce deficits and put less into one end of that machine, we are going to get less out of that machine unless it is uh, reformed. So we need to transform the way in which we provide public services if we've got uh, any hope uh, of, of maintaining service outcomes. The way the CBI uh, sees it across the piece in terms of public services, uh, the answer, or part of the answer to transforming that, 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 that system of providing services is by opening those services up. No one sector has got a monopoly uh, on good ideas on how we can do things differently. So only by having a diverse uh, market for providers uh, can we get the innovation, the different ways of doing things uh, that we need to maintain outcomes but with, with lower input. And obviously commissioning uh, is a huge part of the answer, getting, getting better at how we commission, how the public sector manages the market, but also from the provider perspective, how providers respond uh, to, to that change sort of commissioning model uh, is a crucial part uh, of, of the answer. As part of the project that CBI has been doing with the new local government network, uh, we started off by surveying um, the commissioner community uh, and uh, the provider community utilising our, our, our different networks. Um, and it was quite interesting, actually, uh, in and of itself, uh, the different perspectives on what the barriers uh, to more effective uh, commissioning were. Um, you won't be surprised to hear that from a provider perspective, the problems tended to all be on the commissioner side, and it was, uh, it was a lack of skills and, and capacity uh, on the commissioner side. From the commissioner perspective, on the other hand, uh, the lack of responsiveness perhaps in the provider market and a, and a question of capacity uh, of commissioners rather than a, rather than a skills base uh, was the problem. So one of the issues that we're going to need to overcome is actually establishing a, sh a, shared, eye, uh, a shared sense of the problem uh, and some of those barriers that exist to improving commissioning uh, in order to, uh, to, to effect change. But there were three things perhaps uh, that I should focus on from the provider perspective uh, that they felt um, were the, the areas where commissioners needed to focus on most uh, if we're going to in, improve um, uh, commissioning. The first was obviously, as I've mentioned, uh, skills. Um, effective commissioning uh, from the provider perspective uh, requires uh, sound understanding of market design, project management, uh, contract negotiation, uh, contract management skills. And it was felt on from the provider side that these are not always there in the, in the quantities that they're, they're needed uh, in the public sector. Um, as a related aspect to this, there's a, a, an attitudinal uh, change that's needed in terms of the sort of risk aversion. Uh, it was felt that very often um, public sector commissioners conflate uh, commissioning and procurement and take a very uh, sort of process-focused approach to commissioning, which actually perhaps is more, more appropriate uh, for procurement. So defining those two terms uh, uh, is a very important step starting point. Um, CBI really strongly supports the Commissioning Academy uh, that the Cabinet Office and Local Government Association uh, are taking forward at the moment. We're involved in that uh, in providing a, a private sector a 